Hi everyone, um, welcome back to Stepping Back in Time. Uh, yesterday, Anya showed you how to make 18th century pound cake and today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a tallow candle. Um, so uh, just to say thank you very much um, if you joined us yesterday and we're gonna be doing this every day this week, Monday to Friday at 11 a.m. And um, the reason we're doing this program is to find out a bit more about life in the past. Um, we're based at Newington Green Meeting House, um, which is on the border between Hackney and Islington. And at Newington Green Meeting House, we do a lot of work um, trying to tell the stories of some of the people um, and the history of the local area. Uh, so today we're going to be making a tallow candle. Now, this is my version of a tallow candle that I've made that you're going to be making today. Um, so what I've done is I've taken an old baked bean tin. That's our, our candle inside there, which is the beef dripping. This is the kind of beef dripping that I bought. Um, you'll be able to get it from a supermarket or maybe a butcher. Um, beef dripping isn't used as much nowadays, but in the past it was very traditionally used for um, putting on bread, cooking potatoes, um, roasting and frying things in things. So you can still find it. Um, and that's going to make up the candle inside here. Can you see, I made this one the other day. And then here's our wick here, which we'll light. And obviously anything to do with lighters and fire, you're going to need an adult to supervise you. So please, please don't do that by yourself. Make sure that you're doing all of this with someone. Because what we're gonna be doing as well is this, uh, this beef dripping, the fat here that makes the candle, that's gonna have to be hot and warm, you're gonna to have to warm that up on a stove and then you're gonna to have to pour it in while it's hot. And hot fat is very dangerous, so please do be careful. So, um, why are we making candles? Well, in the 18th century, which is about 200, 250 years ago, which is when people like Mary Wollstonecraft, people like Richard Price, Thomas Paine, Benjamin Franklin, and all these people that um, are quite famous today used to come to Newington Green, and they used to go to the meeting house. They used to talk about how they wanted to make the world a fairer place. In At that period, if you were going to uh, be inviting someone round to your house, especially in January or February, we all know that it gets dark really early. So it'd be about five o'clock and then your house would be dark. Now, there's no electricity and you're really reliant on candles to keep it light. Also, it's not just about doing nice things like having friends over. Lots of people worked in the evenings. If you were a woman, you might have been working by creating and fixing clothes. You might have been doing piecemeal work, which means maybe you um, make you knit um, items of clothing and you sell them for a bit of money. If you were a child, you might have been helping clean the house. You might have been making food ready for tomorrow. You might be having a bath. Um, if you were a man, again, you might be working or you might be trying to get some rest in your house and you need the candles. Now, candles, if you're buying a lot of them over a lot of period, and especially if you're in a house um, where you don't earn a lot of money, it's going to be very expensive to keep buying these candles. Now, tallow candles, um, tallow is uh, what you get if you use um, the fat from an animal, specifically a cow, um, and you take the fat away and then you kind of melt it down and use it for this. Beef dripping and tallow are slightly different. It's a slightly different fat that they use, but for the purposes of today, you'll be able to kind of see how tallow candles work. Um, it was a very inexpensive way of making a candle because obviously you can take beef and animal fat, maybe you have a couple of cows or a couple of pigs or sheep that you look after that you you keep and then maybe when you go to eat them you can use the fat that's left over to make the candles so it's a very cheap way of doing it it also means that you've always got a stock of candles in an emergency so let's start so what we're going to need is an old tin um, you could use a glass container or something too if you've got one as well, but you need something that's kind of tall because your candle's going to burn like that. So it needs to be quite tall, not too thin, otherwise the candle won't burn for very long. Now, the first thing we're going to do is take a candle wick. You can buy these online. 
Um, they're quite inexpensive or maybe from like a craft shop or something. And it's got a little metal base. And this is the wick. Now we put this inside the tin um, and then we fill up the, the tallow, the beef dripping around it, you see. And then when it's finished, the wick will stay in the middle like that. And the way that a candle works is that the flame melts all of the, the wax or the tallow. Um, and uh, because of that, it doesn't get to burn all the string at once because it's sat in, in the fat, you see. And so the candle has, the, the flame has to wait until all the fat has gone to be able to burn all the way through the string. So to attach the wick on the bottom, I've got a hot glue gun, which I am just going to put a dash on there so that I can stick it to the bottom of my baked bean tin, which I'm going to do now. So just in the middle, pop it in the middle there. Now it doesn't matter if you don't have a hot glue gun, you could do the same by using a bit of super glue, but again, you have to be really careful with super glue, so make sure that you've got an adult with you. There we go, right. I was just using a fob to hold it down there because sometimes it's hard to get your hand in the be baked bean tin. Right, okay, sorted. So now we have the candle holder and we've got the candle wick. Now I have here the beef dripping. Again, it, this is the beef dripping that I used. And a baked bean tin is 400 grams. So if you want it full, kind of full like this one, you're going to need at least 400 grams of the beef dripping. Uh, this one came in 250 grams. So what I bought is, as I bought two, because I made one yesterday and made one to show you today. Now you need to melt the beef dripping. And when you melt the beef dripping in a pan, and again, you need to be really careful because this is hot fat, it's very dangerous. Um, it's going to be hard to show you, but it goes very kind of watery and it goes clear. When you buy it, it's hard and yellow. Um, which is what it looks like eventually when it um, goes hard again here, when it solidifies. But at first, it goes um, very see-through and it's very kind of silky. Now, you would have thought because it's beef dripping, this is animal fat that we use it, that it would smell quite a bit. But actually, I was surprised. It didn't really smell that much, which is good. But we're going to uh, put something in our candle today to make it smell even nicer. So once we have that, what we have to do is really carefully pour the hot fat into our candle with the wick there. So you want to kind of miss the wick if you can and pour it gently in. Now I've managed to do that okay. And you might be able to see it's a kind of yellowy colour. Looks a bit kind of like apple juice or something. So now that's finished, we'll put the pan down. Now the next thing that we need to do now is we need to let the fat solidify. Now that can take quite a bit of time. I think you need to leave it for at least half a day or something before um, it's properly solidified and then you can use it as a candle otherwise the wax will melt too quick and then the flame will burn all the way down the string and that's not going to be a very good candle for you so what you need to do is you need to make sure that the wick stays upright in the middle now this is a bit fiddly if people make candles today they have a little tool that they put across and it just kind of holds the wick in place because you don't want to be sat here like this all day making sure that the wick doesn't go to one side now there's a couple of ways that you can do this you can kind of use a bit of sellotape there's one method that i um tried out yesterday where you have a little bit of sellotape put that across the top there and then you can kind of attach the wick to the middle. Can you see? And then that way, it can dry and the wick stays in the middle. And once it's dried, it will stay there of its own accord, but it needs a bit of help at the minute. Um, another way that you can do it is take a fork. Now with a fork, what you can do is you can wedge the wick in the middle and the teeth will kind of hold it in place, you see? And then you just have to find a way to balance the fork on. 
And this is a bit uh, precarious, but the best way I found was to do it on a mug or something like that. Then that way, the, the candle, uh, the, the wick is held in place by the fork, you see? And then once it's solidified, you just take it away and you've finished and you've got a candle like that. Now, once your candle has been kind of left for half a day or something, um, you are ready to use it. Oh, I forgot I said, we're gonna put something in our candle to make it smell a bit nicer. Um, this is some lavender oil. You might have some other oil in your house or you might be able to go and find some from somewhere. Um, lots of different smells. I think lavender would have been a popular one um, back in the day as well because lavender used to grow locally um, to Hackney. So we put a few drops of that in there and what that will do is just make sure our candle smells extra nice. Lovely, great. So we leave that one. This candle is one that I made yesterday, so I'm going to show you how it works. So again, if you're going to be lighting a candle, you need to make sure that you've got an adult with you. And there we go. Perfect. It's lit. My wick's quite long, so I can show you. So what it's going to do is burn all the way down to the fat, and then hopefully you'll have a nice tallow candle like they used to make a couple of hundred years ago in your own house. Thanks for joining us today. Um, tomorrow, um, it's gonna be me again, I will be back, but tomorrow we're gonna be doing something different, which is we're going to be making our own quill pens. A Couple of hundred years ago, they didn't have biros or even computers to write on. And um, so people used to make these special pens um, with a feather on the top and that you could dip in ink and then you'll be able to write letters, write books and, and those kind of things. So we're gonna be learning how to make your own quill tomorrow. And um, again, we're gonna be here every day this week at 11 o'clock with different crafts. On Thursday, we are going to be learning an 18th century song. You don't need to bring anything for that one at all. You can just sing along. Uh, and then on Friday, Amnia is going to be back. Great, thank you, bye.